Ah, oh, my first PR ship, Monarch. Man, back at that time, I didn't really know much about the starting six PR ships. So it was going to be a very interesting situation of getting to know each of the girls themselves. That said, something about Monarch's expression seemed a bit off. She definitely did have pride in herself, which for a Royal Navy ship, that's to be expected, if anything. However, her expression seemed to also show a bit of pain to it. I am not really sure what the reason could have been at the time, but my curiosity was definitely wanting to figure it out. Poor Monarch. I remember when I first saw that post, I was just- I just felt terrible. A character who is seemingly strong and powerful shows that even she too has moments where she feels completely vulnerable. It just goes to show that while she may be one of the game's PRs, she's still going to be quite similar to the rest of the ship girls in terms of personality. That said, today is the day that we review our first PR ship and HMS Monarch gets to spend that day in the spotlight. Now, given that this is our first PR we're covering, let's compare her against one of the strongest stat stick ship girls we Yay! have. Uh, no, Sandy, I meant War Spite. You know what? Actually, here, I can test this now. <laughs> you know, I thought that was going to be a trap door or a walking cane exit, but not a star KO. Gosh, are you trying to kill somebody? Anyway, we'll be looking at Warspite's stance as a normal SR rather than her retrofitted form. While Warspite's skill set does hurt her a bit pre-retrofit, she still had a pretty strong neutral game as her stats made her one of the heaviest hitters of the non-PR shipgirl battleships. That said, this stat stick advantage that she has will allow her to be a pretty good comparison for Monarch. For those that might be interested in Warspite's full analysis, check the iCard on the top right. Anyway, let's dive in. In terms of survival stats, Monarch barely beats Warspite in HP. This means that she'll be able to tank a little bit extra before falling to enemies. Monarch's heavy armor means that she will take considerable beatings from most attacks, but will suffer heavily from torpedoes from vanguards or torpedo bombers, as well as AP shots from battleships themselves. So be sure to be a bit cautious around enemies with that type of weaponry. Evasion-wise, Monarch also barely beats Warspite in the evasion game. I would say that she has a better chance to dodge attacks than our War Corgi, but the drastic difference the two of them have in luck could turn the tables against Monarch in this particular case. Lastly, her anti-air follows a similar trend of barely beating Warspite, so she'll have a little bit better overall survivability against plane attacks and a little bit better damage against planes. Not a bad start overall against our well-known War Corgi, but how are things on the offense side? Monarch's firepower actually loses to Warspite by a bit so her overall gun damage in that regard will be a bit lower. Her reload does beat Warspite by a bit, but while she may have a slightly better timer, it's not going to make a major difference. Considering things so far, it seems that her damage output might actually lose to Warspite. But let's quickly talk about equipment here. Now, Monarch as a PR ship gets bonuses each time her dev level reaches a milestone. These bonuses range from additional gun mounts, efficiency, and some stat boosts. Much like Warspite though, Monarch has three main gun mounts and three secondary gun mounts. Efficiencies may make a difference in this direct comparison, and they actually do. Monarch's main gun efficiency sits at 145% at max dev level, a rather decent difference compared to Warspite. That might actually make a difference in the overall damage output that Monarch can do. Now, much like her main gun, her secondary gun efficiency also beats Warspite at 210%. With both of these being higher than Warspite's particular efficiencies, she'll have a good chance of actually out-damaging Warspite when it comes to overall gun damage. Lastly, her anti-air follows this trend of barely beating Warspite at 110%. Overall, while her stats might barely match Warspite, her efficiencies with her weaponry will be the deciding factor in this regard. Monarch's in a pretty solid spot with her stats. While she may not be beating Warspite by much, she still does easily contest with her. And that's something for a ship that's got decent stats to begin with. Now, looking at the stat line at level 120, we do see a pretty decently balanced jump in all of her stats. 
These for the most part don't change her positions at all against Warspite. However, the gap in firepower actually shrinks, and can allow for a contest even more with Warspite there. At level 125, we actually do see Monarch pass Warspite in firepower, even if it's just barely. So in the end, she gets the last laugh. Well, until you retrofit Warspite. The question now is, does her skills put her in the similar situation as Warspite, or does it allow her to stand out even more with them? Monarch's first skill is Monarch's Coercion, which has up to a 70% chance to activate when she fires a salvo. When she does proc this particular skill, she will fire a special barrage. Now the barrage's damage is based on the skill's level, and will also decrease the speed of any enemies hit by it up to 40% for 6 seconds. The damage on this barrage is definitely not to be underestimated, as it does hit pretty hard, especially against medium and heavy armors thanks to it being AP shells. The speed debuff she inflicts will also make it easier for the full team to connect their shots, even if it's just short-lived. The barrage seems to be frontal, so flagship spot is best for her barrage to have a better area of effect to work with. Keep in mind that AP shells won't do insanely well against light armors, so keep in mind who you're fighting. Her second skill is Against the Current. This one is a very interesting one. The first aspect of it is when her HP falls below 20%. When that happens, she'll recover 12% of her HP over the next 10 seconds. This effect only is allowed to be used once per fight. Another aspect that she does get is for every 1% of her health that she's lost since the start of the fight, she gets one extra point of reload to work with. Now, the wiki doesn't say the start of the fight, so I'm unsure which one it is between the wiki and the game. That said though, this reload boost can be nice, but keep in mind that it's not going to do much unless she's taking serious amounts of damage, which that's a completely different problem entirely. To give you an idea, the most I can get in one situation for this gun is around 3 seconds off her cooldown. Why this isn't something to consider is because she would need to lose pretty much 99% of her HP just to get this in one fight. On another note, the zombie behavior she gets in this skill can give her a much needed survival ability to help her deal with a few extra fights or to survive very long fights. This can give a good solo backliner that doesn't necessarily need a healer to get through fights if she's fighting a mob, or just that little extra damage control for boss fights that might allow them to go a little bit longer. At max fate sim, she will get an extra 3% of her health back when it falls below 20%. 3% may not be a crazy thing to go for overall, so you can skip this for now if you'd like. Her final skill is one that's given to all PR ships called Siren Killer, which grants a small damage bonus against Sirens specifically. This damage boost is nice, but it is limited in that Sirens aren't in a good chunk of the game's content, so this skill won't be used as much as other skills will. Overall, her kit and skills put her in an interesting place. She's got the damage output and the gun efficiencies to really kick butt in the field. And she's got the survival capabilities to take on longer battles. She has a little support that she does do for her team with the speed down debuff she applies, but it feels like she's a bit more of a lone wolf type character. The question now is whether she's a mob or boss main fleet member. While she can work well in mob fleets, she seems more focused towards a boss fleet. For medium armor and heavy armor bosses, her barrage and damage output can easily dwindle away those bosses' health pools. That said, one needs to pay attention to what type of boss you are fighting, as taking on a light armor with Monarch and her barrage, that won't go too well. That said, her firepower and gun efficiencies will allow her to clean up mobs, and the barrage can also clean up the heavier armored foes in the mob fleet. So it might come down to the boss of the stage you're on, or the teams you're already running. Just keep in mind in both of those areas when you're planning to use her. Now, at the end of the day though, Monarch is a very strong PR ship to come from the first group of PRs. While not necessarily a major team player, she definitely will make sure that her presence is felt on the battlefield. Just take care of her. She's already got anxiety from feeling like she's been discarded, so don't bully her. And that'll be all for Monarch. Hope you all did enjoy this particular video, and that it will help you in your future endeavors. Up next is the HMS maid herself, Belfast, so look forward to her video when that time comes. Whether you're a regular viewer or a patron supporting the channel on Patreon, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys all again real soon.